you have learned about your first type of variable, an integer. Along the way, we have covered not only integers, but assigning values, manipulating data, operators and operands. I hope you are paying attention to those things as well. Let's jump into the test and find out. So let's start with the first question. And the first question is, what do you call this statement? Is it assigning a value, declaring a value, or declaring a variable? Now you've got 10 seconds to think on this. Let me know your answer. And the answer is declaring a variable. Remember that assigning a value is giving the variable its value. And declaring the variable is simply creating the variable, as in this statement here. Declaring a value, I simply wrote to make sure you were paying attention to the specific terminology, and it doesn't necessarily refer to anything specific. The next question is 1.0, a valid integer. Now the choice is simply yes or no. Think on this and remember what I mentioned about integers, and let's see how you do. The answer is no. Now a whole number one is a valid integer and technically 1.0 is a whole number. However, because we've placed the decimal point and created a floating point number, a fractional number, this isn't actually a valid integer. So it's an important thing to know just because we have specified a whole number, the way we specified it with a dot has turned it into a floating point number. So this is not a valid integer. Next up, is minus 255 a valid integer? Your choices again are simply yes or no. You've got 10 seconds to think on this one. Let me know your answer. And the answer is yes. An integer can be a positive or a negative number unless you specify specifically that you want something called an unsigned integer, the sign meaning the minus part of this number. We will come to unsigned variables in future lessons, but hopefully using the knowledge of the previous lesson, you had enough information to realize that negative 255 is still a whole number and that's what's important. There are further things such as the minimum and maximum possible values that variables can have, but again, we'll cover those in future, and it's a much larger number than this, so there's no need to worry for that. Next up, we'll check some of your understanding of statements. What do you call this statement? Is it assigning a value, declaring a value, or creating an expression? Again, you've got 10 seconds to think on this. Let me know your answer. And the answer is assigning a value. If you notice the counter doesn't start with int, we aren't declaring a variable. You'll also note that the second answer wasn't declaring a variable anyway, it was declaring a value, but that was thrown in there to make you think. Because we haven't got the declaration starting with int, we presume counter already exists. And this specific statement is assigning the value seven to counter. And an expression would be something like seven plus five or counter plus two. Now let's see how good you are at figuring out the answer without running the code. What is the final value of the variable counter from this expression? Is it minus one, four, or is there no change? So after running both of these statements, what would the end value be stored in counter? And the answer is, there's no change. If you look carefully here, we first declare a variable with var counter equals five, and we assign it the value five in the same statement. Now counter minus one on its own is an expression. We aren't assigning the value one or minus one to counter. 
we are calculating that counter minus one would produce a result, but we haven't assigned it anywhere. We haven't done counter equals counter minus one. So you have to pay close attention to the syntax to fully understand what's going on. Now these tests are super important. If you don't understand that statement, you must go back to the lesson and really understand the syntax. So you are happy that you know what both of these statements do. If you don't understand these statements at this point, you will struggle going forward. So go back and make sure you absolutely understand these basic syntax rules. Let's do another one. What is the final value of counter here? Is it one, two, or is this invalid code? Now again, look at the syntax carefully and let me know your answer. And the answer is one. Again, let me explain to make sure you understand this syntax. The first statement, var counter equals two, declares the variable counter and assigns it the value two. The second statement, counter minus minus, is the shorthand for counter equals counter minus one, which gives the result of reducing counter by one by assigning counter a value that's equal to itself minus one. We covered this in the lesson, so hopefully you understood that and you got this right. Again, if you didn't, it's very important that you do understand these syntax rules. So I'd recommend going back to the syntax and the integer lessons to make sure you score 100% on these. And let's do one more. What is the final value of counter here? Is it 20? Is it 10? Or is it 100? Again, look at the syntax very carefully, and I hope you all get this one right. And the answer is 10. Now, if you look at the syntax again, the first statement, var counter equals 10, declares and assigns the value 10 to counter. And the second statement is again an expression. It's not an assignment of value. There is no counter equals, there's no equals sign. Therefore, counter is unchanged. So the counter times 10 would produce a result of 100, but we aren't assigning that value back to counter. So it goes nowhere. A good rule if you struggle to understand this is to simply look for the few shorthand commands such as counter minus minus counter plus plus or the equals sign. If none of those are present in a statement, then the value is not going to be assigned. Therefore, the value won't change. Now, this is not a hard defined rule and there are exceptions as always, but it's a very good thing to start with to help you to understand if values are going to be changed. If you don't see a variable name followed by an equal sign or a double plus or a double minus, then the likelihood is that code is not going to change the variable value. Again, if you didn't get this right, don't worry, go back to the lessons and rewatch them and come back until you score 100% on this one. Now let's move on to another type of statement. What do you call this statement? Is it an expression, an evaluation, or an assignment? Now think on this one carefully, you should get this, we've only just covered it, and let me know your answer. And the answer is an expression. We will cover expressions in depth in future lessons, but we did cover them in the previous lessons. And I mentioned that an expression is something similar to counter plus one. In short, it means it's a statement that produces a result and it's typically on the right side of an assignment statement. For example, counter equals counter plus one. The counter on the left is the variable and the counter plus one on the right is the expression that produces the result of counter plus one. This then gets assigned to the counter variable on the left. Now this one will have been difficult for some of you because it wasn't directly emphasized, but again, the importance of software development and helping you to understand, as I will mention often in these lessons, 
is to look for the small details and pay attention to things you don't think are important at that time because they always are important in future. So I'm hoping that a, at least 50% of you got this right. If not, don't worry too much about the answer to this one, but it is very good knowledge to have at this stage. And the last test for this lesson, what do you call the plus in this statement? Is it an operator, an operand, or an assignment? Again, I did mention this once or twice in the lesson and I didn't emphasize it, but if you were paying attention, hopefully you will get this one. Let me know what you think. And the answer is the operator. This is an expression, counter plus one, and to break down the expression, on the left is counter, which is called an operand, on the right is the number one, a literal value number one. It's also an operand. And the middle thing, the plus, is the operator. The operator decides what to do with the two operands on either side. In this case, it adds them up. The plus is the addition operator. You can think of an operator as somebody operating a forklift, somebody operating some equipment. It's the person or the thing doing the job. It's the one orchestrating the actions and producing the results. In a software terminology, the operator plus here takes the literal value one and the counter variable, adds the two together and provides the result, which could then be passed into an assignment statement. So in this case, the left and right values are operands and the middle action which is currently a plus, but could be a minus, a times, a modulus, it could be various other operators, is the thing that decides what to do with those values. Now, hopefully you scored fairly highly on this test. Again, these tests are designed to be hard to score 100% on because learning isn't easy. It doesn't happen by watching the lesson once and magically you know all the information. It happens from consistent learning and feedback. And as always, don't be afraid to go back and rewatch lessons multiple times to solidify your knowledge.